Carolyn Aloria, and welcome to a really, really exciting special edition of my live. And I am so friggin' super excited to talk to you about this particular person that I invited on. We were just talking ahead of time, and the golden nuggets she gave me are going to be so beneficial and helpful for you about creating freedom in your life. When your life is, Cindy is going to tell you a story about her life being so chaotic, so crazy. Um, so much going on and now she's doing all this incredible work with horses and coaching and she's a she's got reading ability and she's just phenomenal and I've known her for years. So we're going to talk about how to create freedom when your reality is showing you anything but that, which I think is a super important topic. And what's so fascinating to me before I got on this Facebook live with Cindy I was getting a text from a friend of mine who's like a VP at a big company. And she was like, I just so admire what you're doing, Marilyn. You know, you're living the dream. You're living your life. I want to figure out how to do it. And this is like one of my closest friends. And I get it. I used to work in the corporate world. I used to work in TV. I understand when you have bills to pay and you have a family to feed, how do you create freedom in your life? You know, so we're going to talk about what happens when you feel like your life is spiraling out of control and you and how do you stay the course like how Cindy is a true testament to staying the course and she followed her dreams and still we just talked about this and she has a Facebook page that she's putting together called trust the path which we will lead you to if you're interested in and she said but that's what I'm doing Marilyn trusting the path you know I'm trying to trust the path and I was like Cindy me too you're not the only one who's trying to trust the path, right? Just because I, I trust my guides and I believe it and all of that doesn't mean I don't get knocked around on the path. And I said to her, I'm really fed up with people out there who say, do this activation and you're gonna be healed forever and you're never gonna have to worry about trusting the path again. Bullshit. So before <laughs> I bring Cindy on to talk to you, she saved something that shocked the heck out of me. So three years ago, she was going through a tremendous amount of upheaval. I mean, tremendous when you hear her story. And I wanna make sure that we're on Facebook and everything's good and I can say hi to people. And by the way, we do have a tag word today. It's called freedom. So if you do that freedom, you're gonna get invited to something super special. It's a great video about creating freedom in your life. And also, um, if you feel like this topic is really beneficial to other people, please share it. Uh, with your friends, family, whoever you're out of the closet with. If you're talking to someone like me, not everybody can share that they talk to a psychic medium. Um, so do share it. Now, Cindy is like, this is such a huge thing for her, right? What she's doing today, even coming on here. And this is, she's getting, she was just telling me, I'm getting ready to do video and I'm nervous about it. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. So when we decided to have Cindy on, she sent something to me. Cindy's part of my membership for your soul program, which is my paid membership program. By the way, if there's any soul stars on, hit hashtag soul stars so I know you're here. Um, so she shared something with me that blew me away because I, I, I'm going to play it for you right now. And hopefully everybody will be able to hear it. It's Marilyn. I thought Janet told you when I could call. Um, I am not going to be around. It's that swamp this week. So I was hoping to catch you now. I know that you're having a really rough time speeding and I want you to do the best you can to just trust that whatever happens, it's meant to be, even if it's something that feels like it's so awful. Um, trust that there's always something better. And I know that that's really difficult, but I've been doing a lot of work around that and uh, trusting that myself and really trusting God in everything. And um, I really see a lot of truth in it, a lot of truth in even if you had to um, go to jail or uh, I'm not really sure what they're talking about or okay, I have to be fine. You will work it out and you will figure it out and something magnificent will come from it because that's who you are. You're a magnificent being. You're a magnificent woman and you've been giving it your all and engaging yourself and your soul. And I know that they're watching out for you. So I just wanted to say that to you. Um, I'll be in the car until 6 o'clock, 323. So uh, I'm going to cut that off because that's my personal number and Cindy's a membership for your soul member. So she gets to have that. <laughs> um, so welcome, Cindy. Cindy, say hi to everyone. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so um, Cindy, I would tell them a little bit what I would love for you to do, honey, is um, 
Before we go into your story of what went on, tell them a little bit about your path today, like what you're working on today. Let's start with the bright, shiny stars and what's going on. Well, I am just weeks away from completing every requirement from a two-year course that I found on actually Anna Maria's website uh, or Facebook page called um, Touch by a Horse. And I've always been interested in equines and equine therapy, and I will graduate from a two-year program, and I will be an equine gestalt coach. So that's more in the dirty, nitty-gritty of trauma and um, pain and grief and how to kind of heal yourself and get out of it and put you in the round pan with a horse and see what he can do to help you too. So. Love that, love that. And uh, what drew you to that work? I think I was one of those people that wanted to blow out the birthday candle from a very early age for a pony and um, still planning on having that. And um, I saw it on the thing and I was like, well, I don't have a horse, how do you do this? And she kept assuring me that you don't need a horse. You'll get it. You'll manifest it. You can learn to lease one. You can do this work. And if you're just meant to do it. And I felt like it was going to take every little thing that I know from Marilyn and guides and teaching and a lot deeper than hairdressing coaching <laughs> and learn to work with a horse because I just know that they're magnificent. And if I could do this, I would just be amazed at myself. And I did it. <laughs> I did it. Yeah. So now, so now we're going to tell people because I really, and if you're just joining me, make sure you're typing in the word freedom so you can get the full fun thing that we have today. And normally I start with somebody's story, the, the really difficult moments, but I wanted to celebrate Cindy in the moment she is today because Cindy and I were just discussing before this broadcast how that she's like, you know, it hits her sometimes still what happened to her in today, in the moment today. And I'm like, you don't just go through a trauma and all of a sudden it's gone. It becomes part of your story. It becomes part of a little bit of who you are. It, it catapulted you to who you are today. So we tend to think like we just got to be healed and over it. And it's just another layer. And it's and then sometimes it's there and it's how we learn how to be with it and see it and transform it even further. That allows us to be the great beings that we are. So Cindy, take us back three years ago. I'm probably going to hide me while you tell us the story of what was going on in your life. When I found Marilyn, I was uh, experiencing the death of my mom. My father had passed away a long time ago, catapulting me into a relationship with my brother, a strange brother, and I got my, well, on the books, like third DUI. And I had just got sentenced to a year in jail. Uh, my emotions were so off the charts, um, give or take how bad it was, or I didn't get pulled over or anything. It happened to be in my house, but I had tapped a neighbor's car and someone had called 911 and they came to my house and we were going down that road again. And the interesting thing was, is I really didn't think I was there anymore. And I really was close to not being there, Marilyn, but for some reason, my soul or my past lives or whatever ability I didn't have to continue to heal myself and understand my responsibilities and how I dealt with life, where I was going down the path again. And I just knew the next couple of years of my life were going to be hell and back. But I also found you and I found Stephanie and I found Anna Maria and I found everybody. And... I was like, let's get this stuff over with. Whatever this is that I have to learn one more flipping time. And I did, and I did a lot of it. And it's it's actually, this August, it'll be four years. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I did. I had to go to jail. I was able to go into like a halfway house. And so I was able to work. But I did have 60 days. I went in, Marilyn, and you know that this group sustained me in there. And um, the minute that I walked in the door and I was ready to just 
face it because you know they give you all kinds of chances not making you sit in there for a, a couple of them i was like wow spirit you are showing me the nitty-gritty down dirty aspect of my actions and um it's time to get over this and it's time to move on and become who i'm supposed to be <laughs> and help others but i also recognized in all honesty that I think that I'm such an eternal optimist that I was like, it'll only be 60 days. It's cool. And I went in there and I realized how many people are really hurting. And I think that's what spirit wanted to show me too. And how dark it can really get. That wasn't prison. That was just jail, county jail. But um, yeah. And I did everything. I cried. I helped others. I, I had a spirit guide in there, her name was Jasmine. And I could smell it, I could smell it when she was there helping me out. But I just, it was, a, it was a lot, it was a lot. And then I had to go through, you know, another nine months of working and living in a halfway house. And I actually had signed up for school right before it all happened for this horse program. And Melissa even wrote me in there and said, hang in there kiddo, you're learning something even bigger than what you're, and for here. Who wrote you? Uh, the director of my program. Oh, good. Yeah. So I want to take everybody back because it's some story and it's even getting me because now I'm remembering what that time because I remember when I left you that message and I remember walking around my neighborhood, my dogs, and Cindy was revealing to me that she was going to probably have to go to jail and for how long she was going to go to jail. And this you don't want for anybody in your life. And I knew Cindy and I knew that she was truly sorry for what had happened and she also shared the, the circumstances around it and some of it she was you know it's hard when you're dealing with court systems and stuff and uh she was doing everything she could to rectify the situations as well as straighten out she straightened out herself right away but i remember just feeling like the fear you had you're a single mom you had did, was your son living at home with you as well yes yes he was old enough at that time to stay by himself and have my friends help and stuff. But yeah, he's been quite the trooper. I'm having to heal that part too, you know? Yeah. And you were really afraid of what your life was going to be, weren't you? Like, like, yeah. can you recall like that time of, because I kind of want people, for me personally, Cindy, and I'm sure you're the same way, what helps me get through really dark times sometimes is hearing somebody's dark story and how they got through it. Mm -hmm. Does that help you too? Yeah, I just, the faith that it took and the looking at oneself and just going, this some of this has to be, I'm sorry, but some of this has to be past life. What am I not figuring out? What am I not healing? Why am I going through this? Like, and and then I then here and now accepting that I'm going through it as well. You can use a past life excuse because we don't understand where it's coming from, but at the same time, you know, it's this life too. And it just seems so intense, Marilyn. It just seemed over the top for me. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's a lot. And I'm sure that, cause I know from my own personal experiences, there's a lot of shame that comes up, for, came up for me, like in certain things. Did you experience a lot of shame and the guilt and the how did you deal with that? The shame is huge, yeah. The shame is huge. Um, I think I dealt with the shame by accepting the responsibility and making it better. <laughs> cause like, you, if you're, you can continue to shame yourself if you continue to stay in the action of it, but when people start to see you doing well, it starts to get better. Yeah. And make responsibility to do well every moment it takes. Yeah, because you had to convince the court systems that you weren't this person that they were making you out to be. Isn't that true? Yeah, a lot of it was coming from, you know, I call it the black and white paper, you know, the paperwork that's what's in the system, like a credit report or a criminal record or whatever and you're just like oh my god i was doing a fitness challenge at the time and i just was dealing with something else and that was my go-to for anxiety and i just 
I just was like, that's not who I am. I'm studying under you and I'm, I'm good. And it, but if they look at your past, they look at your past and you, there's no getting around it. Yeah. And to this day, you know, I'm actually still another, I think, February, uh, February, I'll be off probation. I'm, I'm not on any supervised probation or anything. That's all over with for over a year or so. But if I ever get in trouble again, it's the big house. <laughs> so I had to figure out what God wanted me to do. Because that wasn't it. That wasn't it. We talk and about that to too, about our experiences and how that will continue to make us a better coach. And I'm accepted that. And I hope to work with people that just poo poo it under the corner and just go, no, this is real. It's time to get your stuff together. You know? Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. Cause I want to hear more. And for those of you just joining us, um, type in the word freedom and you're going to get invited to a great video. Cindy is part of my membership for your soul paid program. And there's some soul members on here. So if you're a soul star, hit soul star. Susan Raskin already said, love you, Cindy. Yes. And Cindy, <laughs> she also That's shared with you. <laughs> What'd you say? That's my book person. <laughs> uh, oh, she sent you the book. So Cindy was telling me that when she was, was it when you were in um, jail that people from membership were sending you cards and stuff and books? Yeah. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Sue okay. and Cheryl and everybody, and uh, it was actually a cute, quick story, but they would do mail call, and he'd be like, Teeman, Teeman, and everybody would, in the, you know, in the room would be like, well, I don't get anything, and, and he, one of the officers said, another one from your fan club, kiddo, <laughs> so it was, it was, it was the best, it was the best, it made my, I, it, it was awesome. I didn't even know they were doing it. I kind of remember there were cards going around because I remember the post. This is a membership for your soul. They were sending her encouragement while she was away. And instead of shunning her or making her feel like she did something wrong and she was a bad person, they were embracing you and loving you and showing you your truth, who you are. So much. Yeah. The post that I would send to you and just cry out like why 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 you know and we would just talk about learning the lesson from it and continuing to just improve yourself and you know there were a lot of why me's <laughs> for sure yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember those Cindy so let's talk about and and I want to talk about the the uh she said she had a um for those of you just joining us she had a she had a guide with her in jail named Jasmine. And yeah. um, I want to hear about that. Like, how did she show herself to you? And that must have been a really magical moment. <laughs> it was, I was like, who's going in there with me, you know? And, um, and I would constantly hear, I'm right here. I'm right here. And I would smell the flowers like I was in Hawaii. It was amazing. You can imagine that's not a great smelling place. So that was lovely. So um, I just, it was powerful. And I would, I would just ask her, you know, to stand by me. This is scary. And um, I, I read books about guides. Susan sent me a lot of guidebooks and I just read books and I would just talk to her the whole time. So that's probably my most important guide in my whole process with you. Is Jasmine. Yeah. Is she still with you today? If I get scared, you know, I'll, I'll call on her a little bit, but not as much. I'm trying to, trying to see who's there again. So um, that one was just so powerful. And I did a lot of journaling. I did a lot of um, just kind of like scrambling my thoughts on paper. I just wrote a lot. I wrote a lot of letters. I read a lot of books. Um, you know, it was not a fun place. People were envious and I just kept trying to keep my heart. They were envious. They thought I was better than them a lot of times because I would just be like, you'll get through this, you'll get through this, you'll get through this. And there's some very dark people in there that are hurting as I finish my horse program, how people lash out when they're hurting. And um, I have a lot more compassion for that now. But... Um, 
you know, I just, I remember before laying in the, in the grass, you did a, um, a meditation about where are they in your life? And I was, and are they, are they on your side? And, oh, and I would go when I would, we would go outside and I would do the, from one of the um, guidebooks and I'd be like, Archangel Michael, you know, and I would just like chant to them and chant to them and chant to them and be with me, be with me. Where are you? Are you in the front of me or in the back of me? And I just did that all the time in there, all the time. Keep me sanity. Did, did you find that that helped you to pull focus from the craziness around you into more of a spiritual perspective? If you were like, yeah. where are they? She's saying, where are they? Because I teach where your guides stand. It's so important mm -hmm. to know where they stand and keep them in that same place. So that's what she's talking about. And um, did that help you to pull the, like, what, what did that do for you? Why don't you answer it? I could, I could feel them. I, I just knew I wasn't alone. You know, I knew I wasn't alone. I, I just, it was so powerful. If I wouldn't have known that, I wouldn't have come out the same person. I would have come out feeling beat up again and abused and what did I do wrong? And I just, I felt more powerful. I felt like somebody was there for me. I felt like I could talk to somebody that, you know, was just there for me as a spirit guide. It was, it was amazing. It really was. I love you for that. Yeah, it, thank you. Thank you. I, I, you know, though, Cindy, how I feel about that because it's you, you took a very dire situation and I know you had, everybody has why me moments and I saw those why me moments, but I also saw you picking yourself up and saying, I'm going to get through this and focusing on a higher perspective when there was nothing that wasn't even showing up in your field. I remember you going to court. I remember seeing the things and like Marilyn, they're going to send me away. And I remember also, I'm starting to remember it now. It was like watching your post and, and then they were gone because you did go away, mm -hmm. you know, it was like, and then I think somebody, it might've been Cheryl or somebody informed us mm -hmm. that you were um, in jail and stuff. And Cindy, that's you. I can't, I can take a horse to water, but <laughs> I can't do the work for you. You're, right. you did the work. I never missed a class, never missed a beat. I, oh, it was, I think that too, that focus, um, don't stop, you know, don't, don't stop. Like, you know, some people say, oh, I can't afford it. I was like, I, saw, I heard a, an evangelist say one time, never worry about spending money on your mind. And um, that really stuck with me. And to stay focused and how you've made this affordable and how you've made it amazing um i'm just i'm here yeah i'm still here thank you if anybody has questions for cindy please put them in i have some more questions myself with her and if you're just joining us um type in freedom we have this great abundance class abundant living with your guides and you're going to get to see that class i recommend that you watch it to the end um not only because i make a sales pitch i do you can do whatever you want with that. I'm not a hard seller, but because there's this heart meditation that I do, that's really phenomenal. So I suggest you definitely, definitely watch to that point. And it's a very, it's a great, great uh, class that I've taught. Cindy, what I want to talk to you about right now, because something's coming up for me as a reader, and I don't think we've discussed this, but I feel that part of your business with your horse therapy and knowing you and Cindy and I were talking about readings before. And by the way, I have so much to say because we had such a powerful conversation before this. Um, other people helped Cindy, Anna Maria Vasquez, Raven, many voice, voices. And these are people, and, and I, I had the, I, matter of fact, I have to have her back on. Stephanie, what's Stephanie's last name? Stephanie Albert. Albert, she's beautiful soul too. And she was a guest speaker. And I got to have her back on because she was wonderful. Um, we, had, we have expert teachers and membership for your soul. And Anna Maria was one and Raven's one and Lori Spagna is going to be one. And, um, some other people. And so Cindy talked about, and then I'm going to give you the reading that I'm getting for you right now, sweetie. She talked about, she knows how important it is. Talk about readings. And what I read, a, wrote a post that I didn't even know it was going to affect you guys as much as it did. Mm -hmm. But I want you to talk about your feelings about readings and about reaching outside yourself for guidance and help. Cause it's better to come from someone else than me. Sure. Um, I've actually been criticized for that a little bit, to be honest with you. It's like, 
um, you just have to run to everybody else for an answer or whatever. But boy, I found my people that told me the truth, you know, and and helped me change and shift. And that was for those like four people or so. And um, it just, it never changed. And if it got so dark, so incredibly dark, I reached out because you can't, when you're, when you're that down, you can't, you've got to find, you've got to ask somebody. I mean, I think there's a difference between crying out and kind of going on and on and on. But if you know that it's that intense, somebody else is standing there for you. And they, they were. And um, I, I'm kind of, I guess it's that hippie of me too. I've always done readings my whole life. <laughs> but um, and there's times when people are really struggling and I'm not even sure I can help them. So I try to give them other information like your group and things like that. But um, I'm, I'm, I am to the point where I think I'm, especially after doing two years of school, which we had to do intensive therapy work in there as well. And she's highly intuitive with the horses. Um, I want to get into that myself. And I might ask a question if something's really confusing, but in fact, I've been so introverted trying to figure that out that now I feel like we can start, like you said, doing videos and start really having that confidence to yeah. talk to people about what I have to offer. And, and so, here's the thing that you said before that I believe you said before um, that isn't being said right now. And Cindy said, there's nothing wrong with going to somebody, going to somebody who doesn't make you dependent on them is super important. Somebody who yes. gives you actionable steps. And then what's really important is knowing what to do with the information. So right. it's not like Cindy was, uh, and this is the same for me, this is why I stopped getting readings and stuff. You, There's a point where people, and this is, I, when people got dependent on me, I'd cut them off. Like I'd like, you're, go to someone else, I am not reading you any longer. You need to make changes in your life. But then knowing what to do with that information, and you did, Cindy, it's okay to go to someone else, but you did take the information and you ran with it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And most of the people that I went to, we did do healings, you know, and mm -hmm. we talked about it from that standpoint, which was huge. It wasn't like, oh, you know, uh, <laughs> I think you'll be fine. You know, you'll be in there a month or so and everything. You know, it wasn't like that. And it was really intensive coming from spirit guides. And it was some pretty heavy, heavy work for sure, Marilyn. Yeah, it is. When you go through stuff like that, it is very heavy work. But here's the thing. And you know this, Cindy. So most of you know I moved. I moved to my dream uh, place. You know, I moved to some place. I don't even know anyone. I just came back from the vet because I found out my dog is probably going to have to have surgery. She's at the vet right now. They had a sedator to get the x-rays. And I was like, Cindy, this is what Cindy and I are talking about. Like, th this happened the day I friggin' the moving truck showed up. And it's a difficult situation, right? And it sucks because I moved here to go exploring with my dogs and hiking. And, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't knock me off my path. It doesn't say, oh, you messed up or you made the wrong choice or you made the wrong decision or you better give it up right now. That's what yeah. I'm trying to, that's what we're teaching people, right? Is, how do you move through it and continue to excel in your life? But yet the pain shows up and how do you transform it into something else? Yeah. Like what do you, go ahead, speak to that. Like I said, you know, I'm actually, my son's kind of getting close to flying the coop, but he's got some stuff that I have to help him with about the abandonment and, it's just been him and I and being there for him. And it does show up, you know. And um, am I always confident? No, but I, I do reach out to those people still. Those still my core, core people that assure me that I'm doing well. And I also tell myself, like, you're not there anymore. You, you've got to get that trauma out of your body. And and just go, oh my God, I'm going to get my certificate. I'm going to be a licensed coach therapist. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> stop. stop, just, you know, smell the roses and just know where you are. But I think you have to really look at that along the way of what you have achieved. And, um, yeah. And I, I have to work on that still a little bit, even, you know, but I'm yeah, doing it. 
it's a habit. And I know I had this habit too, where I just looked at what I did wrong, or I was always told what I did wrong, even if it wasn't my fault. I was always blame, you know, it's my fault, even though it wasn't. It's such a habit to get out of that thinking and to focus on, you know, what you're doing right. Yeah. Yeah. Look around the room. You're in a whole new house in Marin County. You know, I'm in a new apartment. I'm not on Section 8 anymore. I'm like, take a breath, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. And, yeah. and you made this happen. And just last week, Cindy, I discovered something that I did where I wiped out like 50K. That's a lot of friggin' money. Wow. And I was freaking out. I was like, oh my goodness. And I'm like, I could have easily spiraled down like you're you're a loser. You don't know how to handle money. It's your, you know, there here it comes again, Marilyn. And instead I'm like, no, now it's about creation. Now it's about trusting abundance. Now it's sitting in abundance in my soul. And I, I, that's what I love about this work. Now, I also said to spirit, and I'm sure you're going to agree with this. I don't need to learn from extreme circumstances anymore. Okay. I don't need to make my life to be in an emergency place for me to get really creative. Gotcha. So I need to stop that friggin' habit right away. Do you right. understand what I'm saying? I got my one of my final bills from school, and I've been paying three hundred a month and six hundred dollars for all the weekends that we had to do. And I did it, you know. And I was like, "Wow, I actually did it!" Even when I was paying jail fines, and I've got to give my just this right now makes me realize I have to give myself credit and um, I can handle that last eight hundred dollar bill that she just sent me. And wow, <laughs> good for you. Yeah. So I do want to tell you something that's coming through and I want to say to everybody else, if you uh, resonate with Cindy's story, let her know, please. Um, she's building a Facebook page called, page called Trust the Path. It's not up there yet, but it's going to be up there. Cindy is a beautiful, beautiful soul. Get, give her the likes and the loves. Share this topic if it helps with people. And also make sure you type in freedom if you want um, the first uh, 30 minutes of my Abundant Living with Your Guides class. I Again, I'm going to repeat, watch it to the end because I do a live meditation that I've never done before because they channel them to me. And it's a really great meditation. So definitely watch it. And there is a sales pitch at the end to get into membership for your soul if you're interested. Um, what I would like to do now, first, I want to say something that's coming up for me, Cindy, and then I'm going to put you on the spot. And I, she doesn't know I'm going to do this. I want people to write in any questions they have about their lives right now. And I want you and I co-creative to collectively help people, whether we're advising them from life experience, using our intuition, whatever is coming to us, because I know your spirit and I know how gifted and talented you are. And I know that you, uh, this is the next stage of your life. So what's showing up for me, for you, honey, is I keep seeing uh, you in the corner with a horse and I see these women bowed down, looking down. Um, and I feel that you were gonna, and it's not only women's spirit is saying, I'm getting a lot of chills with this, but I feel like you're gonna help a lot of women who are coming out of dire circumstances that are learning how to, one, trust the path, and also transition into the new normal, how to transition into a new life. So whether it's women who've struggled with breast cancer or a divorce or women who just got out of prison, and it's not from a place of, it's people that are um, understand the worth of what you have to offer and are so hungry for the healing therapy and the intuitive advice and the compassion that you're gonna be able to offer them. Now, what I want you to do is get out of the corner because spirit is showing me you in the corner with the horse. And you know that they're saying to me, you're very, very, very magical. You know what you're capable of. They're saying there's no doubt in our ex experience of what Cindy's soul knows she's capable of doing. Um, don't be afraid of making a mistake. If someone ha happens to you, sometimes you'll get clients that, which we talked briefly about, um, they don't resonate with your work. And I was taught at a very early stage, thank goodness, by this woman, Lori uh, Bertazon, that moment was meant to happen. So if somebody came for a reading and ended up hating me because of it, spirit brought them to me for that exact reason. Mm. So I want you to go out and do the work that you're doing for the magnificence that you are. I really, you know, and I really want that. On, on that note, you know, 35 years of hairdressing, you've given advice or whatever. And I think that's one of the things that I find so magical is that the horse can help me confirm what we're seeing. Kind of a part, well, they call, she calls it my, our coaching partner, 
you know? And um, I'm really excited to see that unfold. And she says all the time, you never forget the lesson a thousand pound animal taught you. And they're so amazing. They, if you're not in your truth and you're not in your spirit, they won't even follow you in the round pen. And as soon as you get in your heart space and you start walking around and they walk with you and they start, you're just like, I've got this. I got this. It's just amazing. So go ahead. What were you going to say? Just, um, yeah, the intuition, you know, and you're in a classroom situation. So it's kind of interesting to kind of, you know, do your stuff in front of fellow classmates. And I'm so ready, Marilyn, to, to get on with this. I'm just, I, I gave her the analogy that it's like being a, getting out of beauty school. Like, I could stay in beauty school forever with these teachers, but I need to get somebody in my chair and learn to cut their hair, right? And um, and I do like advanced education, so you don't have to worry about me. So I'm just so ready. I'm ready for this horse to come in, and I'm ready. I'm just ready to sit down with women and do this, and it's really starting to really feel it in my bones, and um, I'm excited. So here's something I want to offer up to you also, because what came in was an animal guide, right? So I want you after this call to work with an animal spirit guide, a horse or something. And I want you to recognize that whether the physical, I think you know this already, but let me say it for teaching ability, uh, whether the physical horse is with you or not, you're going to be able, this work is there. Yeah. Do you know that? Okay. okay. Yeah. So okay. that's what I would like. Okay. Can you feel the horse? Everybody should do this right now. Um, let's do this real quick. And I do want to take some questions. And if you're going to ask Cindy and I questions, be clear with your questions, though. Somebody wrote a question. I didn't understand it. I need to be, you need to be clear with it. Everybody close their eyes and let's all call on that beautiful horse met energy right now. And this is something I teach in membership for your soul. Ask the horse to stand in a particular place near you. Now they could be in your heart, they could be out to the right of you, they could be in front of you, they could be on top of you. It doesn't have to make sense, but pick one specific location where that horse is. And if you have trouble visualizing, just use your breath. And everybody do this anyway, as you see the horse, see the color of the horse, see the magnificence of the horse, Give the horse one word, like whether it's one that represents freedom or power or something that you need right now. Maybe it's inspiration, maybe it's abundance. And just breathe a line of energy from you to the horse. And just keep breathing back and forth. In other words, you're sending them breath and then you're breathing in the breath from them. It's almost like an umbilical cord of breath between the two of you. And let the horse whisper a message in your ear. Hmm. And then just open your, thank the horse and open your eyes. Did you feel your horse? Mm -hmm. He said, I'll yeah. be here soon. <laughs> Good. Good. In the physical sense, he'll be here yeah. soon. Do you remember when Sue Kovacs would do shaman calls? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I had a, I, I sent her a, a note in tears. I went down to the underworld and my spirit animal was a zebra. And he kept telling me to tear off the black stripes. And that was the bad part of my past and I ended up with this beautiful white stallion at the end of it in one of Sue's calls. <laughs> I just, I love everybody in this group. It's, it's amazing. And, um, I named him Rudy, like Rudy Hunter. <laughs> I love so, that. Yeah. Sue, yeah. Sue is uh, one of the moderators in membership for your soul. And we do a lot of bonus calls with people and teachers. And she's one of the people that does some excellent, excellent work in membership. So we're going to take some questions. Cindy and I are going to take some questions from you. And if you're a soul star, make sure you hit hashtag soul star. And if you're just joining, hit uh, freedom and you're going to get invited into my class. And for those of you in membership for your soul, we already have some bonuses with abundant living with your guides. We're going to be doing these classes, two of these uh, classes live together. So uh, that email is going out soon. Um, and I, what? 
28. The 28 days was what we started with, the 28 days of your guides. Yeah, so this is uh, the Abundant Living with Your Guides, which is that um, vision book that just is friggin' magical and crazy. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, so Cindy, Cindy, uh, who is part of membership, and I'm actually gonna read her first question. We both know Cindy. Um, she says, how do I manage process, process time when I'm ready now, been here for years, with health, finance, and moving. And I'm gonna read her second question and I'll, I'll give a little background real quick. How do I manage the time it takes for things to manifest when I've been ready and waiting for years, taking patients to new levels? So Cindy's been struggling with a little bit of um, some health stuff. And Cindy's extremely magical and does a lot with crystals and she's put up the eclipse post for everybody in membership um, and she's teaching people that, but she's struggling with some type of health stuff. So she wants to know, how do you manifest when you're like, Cindy, this is great for you to answer, Cindy Timon, because she's going through an incredible struggle like you were, and she doesn't know how to get, move forward with stuff while she's in this terrific struggle. Right. right. First thing that comes to mind is the faith, you know, just, it's, I guess maybe it's blind faith sometimes, but, and then the focus, just to keep working on it. I mean, there's times you go under the covers, there's no doubt in that. Um, but the rest of that time, you've got to keep working on it. It has to be a quest. It's, it's, it has to be a quest and to just keep finding the answers and find out and, and talk to your guides. And, and like I said, I had my support system, but um, it takes time. I mean, walking into that place and I knew it was two months and I knew it was everything. I just, I think focus is the other big word that keeps coming to me is just look at the end outcome that you want and, and to be healthy. And I think it starts to manifest more and more and more. I, I agree with that, Cindy. That's uh, what I would say to both Cindy's. That's what I would say to you too, sweetie, because, um, I feel like it's so easy to get swallowed up with, and I know with you, honey, I know your story with doctors and things that are happening, but we have to make sure that we are focusing on where we wanna be mm -hmm. and letting that light shine brighter, even if it's not here yet. Now, sometimes that could be a painful experience because it's like, why isn't it here yet? And you feel the, yeah. the abyss between the two, right? Right, and, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, maybe count down the calendar like they do, but I, yeah, you've got a date. What do they say? One day at a time. But um, yeah, you got You got to pull your bootstraps up that next day, and you just got to like, oh, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to do this today, and I'm going to do this today, and then let it go. Then then let it go. I love that because it, and I agree with that, Cindy. Because for you, you have a lot of people in membership for your soul. I'd say probably everybody, but the people I really get to know because they're so active in there. Your dreams and your intention and your work here is so huge. It's so big. And mm -hmm. when you're stuck in this, like feeling like you're stuck in this hole, you're like, how do I make this big thing that my soul is being called to do? How do I make it happen now when I have all this shit hitting me? Yeah. And I and I love what you just said, Cindy. It's one step at a time. It's the next indicated step. So it doesn't have the vision, hold on to it, but just say, what am I going to do today? And if all you can do, Cindy, believe is comment on the post that you did about the eclipse or um, pull out yeah. one of your crystals and post about one of your crystals in membership, a teaching tool, then that's what you do. What were you going to say, Cindy? Time in. Um. It's, yeah, exactly. It's like every moment that you can. I, I was going to say, you know, like, here I am ready to graduate, but I don't have a horse, right? So, and then you're like, oh, my God, I have to pay for boarding. I have to pay for a horse, and I have to do this, and I have to get to know it. And I, I mean, that could be so huge for me. But, like, well, why did I just go through two years if I don't even have a horse? So you can go down that path, and then you can just go, no, I, no. No. I didn't go through this to not have a horse and you're not going through that to not get healthy, you know, and you just, you just gotta keep doing it. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. You're going to have a horse. You'll see. Your horse is magnificent because it's Can showing itself to me. Yeah. If, if it takes, for me, if it takes, I did a lot of work, you know, Marilyn, with Masajati um, on a DNA level too, to get rid of whatever energetic was in there and that was creating this. And Stephanie and I worked on it a lot. For, and it, for me, it was some past life stuff about, and, mm -hmm. and the topic today is freedom. And in school, we had to do our top three values. And my top one value that to this day through school has been freedom. I never want to go back there again. I want to be on my own. I wanted to have my own business. I want that freedom of finances. And it's, it's a powerful, finding your values and what you want to do, your top three values. My second is integrity. And my third is financial abundance, you know. They're still there, and they're my top values. So you just got to keep digging at what your values are. And, and like I said, focus and don't let anything get in the way of that. Yeah, I, I love that because that's what happened to me too. That's when um, things shifted even bigger for me as I had five uh, words that I was working towards, five qualities in my life, and they were freedom. Freedom was the biggest one. Connection to source. Um, feeling inspired, uh, abundance. And I can't remember, I think the fifth one might've been peace or something, I don't remember. And that was a big moment for me to say, okay, so that's what I wanna experience every day. I don't know what that, like, I, I just focused on what I felt it looked like, which was this, living in a place like this. <laughs> but, and I was living in nothing but that. And I just worked every single day towards that. I never forgot those feelings. Like Cindy said, the values. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that those were a part of my life. And if freedom, if some of you who are not feeling anything but freedom, like Cindy, right? If anything, you're feeling anything but freedom. You There's freedom. Some You have freedom of breath. You have freedom of choosing when to walk outside your door, look out the window, find the place where freedom already exists in your power and build from there. So it's so important. And integrity is a huge one for me too, as you know, as a teacher. And exactly. you know. it's one of our, um, one of our lessons that we worked with the whole time. It was on our final and everything. And um, I experienced freedom when I can make my own choices. I experienced freedom or I experienced health when I know I'm feeling better, I know I experience health when I just have that green smoothie. I mean, whatever it takes. Yeah. I mean, this is really getting to me. But there is one other thing that we had to do, and it was our number one move away value. And it was like, I, it, I, for a while it was incarceration. <laughs> and now it's debt. You know, like I, exper I experience, I will only experience incarceration if I do something stupid again. And so, that's my number one thing that I will do anything that I will not experience that again, ever. And um, so that's a really strong component that we had to work on too, is our number one move away value. So yeah. I like, I love that, Cindy, and thank you for sharing that. And Cindy said you're so gifted and inspirational. I wanted to share that with you. And I wanna take Estelle's question real quick here because this is a really great question, Estelle. Sends, Estelle's, I'm not just picking soul stars. Those are the questions that are just showing up. She's also a soul star. So why does it keep coming, and soul stars are people in my paid membership program. I believe Estelle is, because I saw that. So why does it keep coming back? You feel great and then it, the crashing comes back on you and you're back where you started. And what I'm gonna share with you, and I'd love to hear what Cindy says about this, is Estelle, it's a matter of perspective. It's how you hold it. You're really not back where you started. You think you are, but you have really actually moved forward. You have some growth tool. And what you wanna do in moments like that, this is what's helped me quite a bit, is why is this here again? What is this teaching me? I call them character building moments. If it's like I'm in a moment again, that happened to me last week where I told you about the 50,000. I'm like, oh my, how the frick did I get here again? What did I do? What choices did I make? Where did I go unconscious? What do I need to learn from here? And I, I feel the biggest thing that I had to learn, Estelle, was we don't need to have crisis anymore to create something even bigger. Spirit is pushing me to out there even more. And I don't need to, like, they, they had to create that moment in order for me to say, okay, I'm ready to be seen more, whatever it may be. I don't want to get into the personal story of mine. You want to not look at those moments as I'm back, I suck. Why the frig am I back here again? You want to look at it as I'm a better person than I was before. This is showing up for a reason. What do I need to learn? What did you want to share about that, Cindy? Um, 
yeah, and am I, how do I want to put this? Um, if it's coming up, sure, you want to look at it. But like you said, and we even talked about it before the call, it's like, do I have moments of trauma when I get in a car? I'm like, yep, not there. I mean, and it's what keeps coming to me is Satan, get behind me, you know? It just, <laughs> it comes up for you to make sure that you're really clear where you are, I think, as well. Mm. But we do talk about, um, at, at school, we talk about leaving it energetically on the on the arena floor. There, it comes a time when I think it it's part of your brain, but it's not part of your um, DNA or your energetic level. It starts; it can start to dissipate, you know. But it is who we are, and it is what we've experienced. But there isn't the charge to it, and I think that's when the healings kind of occurred, you know. And I do all the work I did with Stephanie about getting in there and doing that theta work and that really deep healing work. So it's, it, there's no charge to it anymore. It's, it's going to be in your brain because it was an experience, but if so, it's a coming back. It's, if it's coming back and it's something you probably need to look at, then ask your guys, well, all right, we got one more little piece of this little freaking puzzle. Like what, what do you want to tell me? And if it's not just go, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm not there anymore. So I, that's I love how that. I, <laughs> so you say, you said Satan, get in the back. Like you just, yes. show, like if it's not, you're just like, get it back, get back there. Yeah. Beautiful. Love that advice, Cindy. That's amazing advice. It's really great. See, this is how you get like two, you get two perspectives and then you get to say, it just allows you to work such, such a deeper level. I just love that. That's great. Um, so anybody who's just joining, cause I know we're, I'm going to take one more question. Uh, I'm talking to Cindy and if you can type in freedom, um, also because you'll get into my class, uh, free class. And, um, so I love that. Jackie said, and I thought this was interesting today. I took, uh, took for myself. I don't know what that is. Why does my anxiousness keep overwhelming me? What do you think about that, Cindy? I got that one too, girl, you know. Um, I just think it's how we're made up, to be completely honest. I have, I just turned 63 the other day and I just think that's part of my makeup and who I am and the anxiety and I, I'm still working on that. But for me, essential oils have changed my life. Mm. Um, I, I, if I feel that, I put on console or I put on balance or I put something on and I let the let that work on itself. Um, and I just do what we just talked about, that little mind chatter stuff. And then I just say, no, you're not there anymore. And it's anxiety. And what is that? anxiety and, and love kind of have the same emotion. I think there's passion behind wanting to get past it. Um, I don't know, Marilyn. I actually kind of struggle with that too. Um, I don't think you struggle with it. You're talking about the tools that you use and who doesn't yeah. struggle with some sense of anxiety at times, you know, or maybe there's some people that don't, but to me, it's about faith and having faith. And it's like yeah. your, your Facebook page is called trust the path. But I think one of the most important things is to not make yourself wrong for it. But I love the fact that you brought in essential oils, you brought in tools. Yeah, Everybody needs tools. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. What are you going to yeah, no, they've changed my life um, on an energetic chemistry level. Um, they really, really work for me. I have a, a diffuser on or I'll put an oil on or I will do something because they're biochemical for me to help shift that. And can I take a half a Xanax? Sure, but she won't give them to me anymore. <laughs> so I just, I don't, and then I tell myself I don't need them. I, I really, I, I just exercise is next up on the step for me. So yeah. now that I'm out of school, so we'll see how that one works. But yeah, I think, it, I think you just have to accept because, you know, if you do a temperament test and I'm an NF, um, J I I'm, I'm a little judgmental. I'm emotional. I'm, um, I'm 
an extrovert, but I'm an introvert. And, you know, and you just do all these tools to know who you are, your astrology chart, you know, why is it still in there? Um, those were all been really important for me to figure out who I am so that I don't, you know, fall off the charts when something is overwhelming. So uh, there's so many, first of all, 63, I agree. Friggin unbelievable. You're absolutely stunning. And somebody's like, you don't look a day over 45. And I agree, Nikiana. <laughs> thank you. Um, but I want to stay on this topic because she said some really, those were friggin nuggets. Um, first thing I think is the most important. And this was the thing that when I went to therapy and was pretty much a, a real wreck, I had to learn tools, which is what I teach in Membership for Your Soul, a lot of tools because they're so important. I don't have a day where I don't journal, meditate, you know, exercise. I do what I need to do and, and I have the freedom to do it, except this morning I had to run to the vet. So I just got to journal, which was great. And I, then I listened to something really inspirational on the way to the vet. You need tools yeah. and techniques to transform. Cindy talked about shifting the energy because and then she talked about her own personality. Knowing yourself is super important. So I think for me personally, I'm a super sensitive person, right? So, mm -hmm. and so Cindy, so something may not affect the person next to me the way it affects me. And I have to know myself well enough to know, wow, this particular situation, I know that it rocks me to the friggin' core. I accept that about myself. I love that about myself. I'm not gonna try to change that right now. What I'm gonna do is is take care of myself in that moment so that it doesn't knock me down the rabbit hole for a long time or have me like you, you know, when I was younger, it was drugs, alcohol, whatever it may be, running to these things that don't serve me. Right. So you transform the energy and shift it and don't make yourself wrong for it and accept it and then allow yourself to grow from a place from there, I think is great. I, I feel like you want to say something else, Cindy, about that. When all else fails, I turn the TV on because <laughs> I just have to get out of my own head. You know, it's, um, yeah, that's, you do. You just have to, you have to know yourself. You have to study those things. And there again, maybe that's running to someone, you know, an astrology chart or whatever, but I've had four or five people look at it and it's all been the same vein. So <laughs> I have, I have uh, five planets in the 12th house, which is the subconscious, which is, really intense. So I know I have a lot of deep, deep work to do. If it was somewhere else, I, I don't know. I just got my answers that way. Like you said, throw a tarot deck out for a minute. Just try to shift the energetics of it as best you can. And um, I'm trying to think what Masajati always said. How can I, how can I connect to source even stronger? That yeah. was that mantra. That's a beautiful one. Good. How can I connect to source even stronger? Because in that moment, actually, that's what you're being called to do. Yeah. If, if uh, like about two years ago, I was hearing a lot of emergency sirens, like constantly. And I, and I knew it was a clairaudient thing. And I said to spirit, why do you keep doing this? And they said, because you need to learn, which again, I had to learn it again. You don't need to be in an emergency state in order to feel God. All right. And you need to recognize that God is with you all the time, you know, and whether it's God's source, whatever it is for all you guys, doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. But uh, I love that. It's how can I connect even stronger to source mm -hmm. in that moment? Because it is about faith. If you're lacking faith and you're stepping into anxiety, you're stepping. Cindy said it was blind faith at times and it is blind faith at yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to stop. But for those of you, I, this was such an incredible uh, experience for me and for everyone that was watching. Cindy shared a beautiful story and some great tools. Type in freedom if you want um, the free training. I recommend, like I said, there is a sales pitch at the end to join Membership for Your Soul and join the class. It's an incredible class, Abundant Living with Your Guides. Most importantly, watch it to the point of the meditation. It's super important that you do that meditation. It was channeled in the moment. And it was really, really good. So I want you guys to really benefit from that. It's being taken down on Friday. So you only have till Friday and then that video is gone. So uh, anybody who, when you type in freedom, just make sure you watch it. Make the time for yourself to do it. And uh, Cindy is going to, um, her Facebook page is going to be Trust the Path. 
So save that because you're going to, I don't like the way I wrote that. I like to capitalize everything. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to want to know more about Cindy because she's going to be offering different types of services, intuitive guidance. You, this is what I love about her. And this is what I love about any teacher you go to. One of the, the best things that my therapist taught me when I left New York and I was went to LA and I was going to be looking for a therapist. She said, you want to ask them if they've been in therapy themselves. If they just answer the one year, she said, don't do it. So when I was researching therapist, I was calling them and asking them if they had been in therapy themselves. Some therapists yelled at me. They were like, how dare you ask me that question? I was like, well, you're not right for me, click. Some of them were like, yeah, just a year. And I'm like, you're not right for me either. And the ones that really went into it and said, yes, I'm still in analysis or I was in analysis. I had to work on myself as well as I did. They were the therapist. When you're working with a teacher, if this speaks to you, I feel for my audience it does, you want to know that they're doing the work on themselves, right? So they're not projecting their crap onto you and they're able to have their own tools to go to, to even make you even better and hold you in a higher place. So do you have any finish, anything you want to say, Cindy, to everyone? Um, she, she's told us numerous times there's about, I think by the time my group graduates, there'll be 150 graduates in her program. She said pretty much every one of them have a therapist as a client. <laughs> Because it's such magical work, and um, plus they're they're a good network for you as well. But um, absolutely, um, there was somebody else even in our in our group that was struggling with the experiences that she had, and I said, "We don't know why spirit has us, had made us go through that, you know, until we start to do this work." And um, but it's important, and. It's wherever you go, there you are, and it's also part of who you are. Um, we talk a lot about parts of self, you know. Um, we do a mandala, and uh, it's a gestalt thing. It's parts of self, and it's all part of who we are. And like I said, with all those planets in the 12th house, I'm still working on that. But um, I, think it's, I think it's happening, and um, I'm just grateful for you. You know that. You think it's happening? <laughs> um, I am. I'm graduating September 22nd. I know it's happening. Yeah, the horse is going to, we'll talk about that, but I feel like it's going to come around that time and you can bring it up sooner if you want. Just get out of any fear of having this horse. This horse is ready for you. It's a beautiful horse. It's a real love. Yeah. So. Um, I just want to tell I, everybody thank you. What? Thank you, everybody. And thank you for the. I call it the membership OG, you know, those people that were there for me. And um, I've been in school, so I haven't been on a lot, but I will, I'm ready to kind of partake again and I'll be there. So, what's the OG stand for for membership for your soul? Original group, like they call it, like, uh, like when we first started. What did we call it? Isn't that, isn't that the term, like the OG, the original group? You know, oh, like the original it, group, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, membership there. She, Cindy's part of the very core, very first group when I first started it. So there's a few people. Uh, there's, there's actually, I think, like 13 original members still. So it's kind of like cool. They've been with it from the beginning. So that's great. Um, thank you, everyone. If you enjoyed this conversation, please make sure to uh, share it with your friends if you feel it's beneficial. Um, do definitely join uh, Cindy's Facebook page if you want to follow her and you can see how honest she is about stuff and there was somebody who actually commented that they did they were in jail last year so I'm really glad that we had this conversation because it's I think some people really have taboo you know around it like oh you know so I'm really glad that we put this out there and really showed up for people Cindy thank you for showing up for people thank you yeah really beautiful and for sharing yourself with everybody Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. And uh, so, and if you're just joining Freedom and watch that class, you're going to love it. And mm, love you guys. And I will see you soon. Thank you so much.